This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. We'd like to welcome you today to First Presbyterian Conway. We are a PC USA church, and we are so delighted that you have decided to join us this morning for our worship service today. My name is Kayla White, and I am the director of music for First Presbyterian. And we want to send Mike and his family a very special uh, thinking of you while they are traveling. He is taking some much needed vacation. And so we wish them well as they rest and safety as they travel and travel back to us. Uh, well, we do want to say welcome. This is a church that prides itself on not being perfect. We are not a perfect church full of perfect people. We are a welcoming place and we are so delighted that you've tuned in to join us this morning. And we hope that your spirits are blessed this morning by the ways that we worship God through spirit, through word, through song, and uh, just delighted that you're here today. Uh, we have several announcements this morning that I want to just draw your attention to. The first one is we have a couple of families who have, have moved or are in the process of moving. And so if you would like to contact the Ishies or you would like to contact Miss Cookie, you can find their contact information in the bulletin and send them a card. We are really going to miss them. Uh, the Ishies are moving out of state, and so we just send them a lot of love and a lot of well wishes as they settle into their new place. We also are thrilled to get the thank you card from Miss Connie, who is sending us thank you for all of the prayers while she was in surgery for her hip replacement. So Miss Connie, we are so excited that you have come through that and are on the mend. Well, friends, excited that you are here today, excited that you've chosen to join us as we worship our Lord.
Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's God steadfast love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Welcome one another in Jesus' name, for Christ, Christ is, truly is truly present, present among, us. among us. Let us, Let us worship, worship God. God. Join me in the prayer of confession. Lord God, creator and redeemer, we know we do not reflect your glory, that we neglect your love, hide your light, and wander, and wander from your ways. We do the very things we claim to hate and fail to do the things we say we love. Forgive us. Restore and reorder our lives by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Set us free, free from sin and death, to love and serve not ourselves, but you and our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And we'll take time for silent confession. Amen. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is finished and past. Behold, the new has come. In Christ we are free, free at last, to live and love God and all people. As servants of God, let us live in the freedom with which Christ has set us free. Joyfully, joyfully serving God, God and all people. And all people. Amen. God gives hope 
through the promise and blessings we receive when the Holy Spirit moves in our lives. The Spirit gives us peace to share. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. The first reading for today is Psalm 13 in its entirety, verses 1 through 6. Listen to the word of the Lord. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice, because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. every 
failure, God, you will have every victory. like to invite our children listening at home to our children's moment. Good evening, everyone, and uh, I'm actually not going to do the children's message from here today. I want you to come with me, please. Hello. Sorry to come to you from another location, but welcome. Today, we're going to talk about welcoming others, much like Miss Kayla is going to do in the reading coming up in the sermon. But I want to to know what you all thought about welcoming others. So let's check in with some kids. How can you make them feel welcome at our church? Well, you could invite them to Sunday school and give them like a bulletin. Yeah? Yeah, or if they're a little younger, say they're still learning how to read, you could uh, give them a hymn, hymnal and help them follow, around, follow along on the song. Absolutely. In the hymnal make them feel welcome. I can make them feel welcome by greeting them or shaking their hand and passing out the peace. Say hello, tell them about like this sermon and stuff and what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes whenever I do like auditions for like musical theater and stuff sometimes somebody might like laugh or like crack a joke and then that just kind of makes me feel better right a, a time that i felt welcome so for somebody made me feel welcome well let's see so let's give the same example on the mission trip mm -hmm. um i was kind of nervous like what's going to happen, how's it going to be, because it was my first one. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea, and then just, um, there, there's a, there were only two boys, and so Wallace just, it was awesome. He just made me feel like I belonged there. Uh, when we moved in to our new house, our neighbors Welcome to us with cookies and hugs. All right, let's pray. Repeat after me. God, thank you for welcoming us. Help us to welcome others. God, we thank you for all that you do. And we ask you to give us the strength to share it. In Jesus' name, amen. And what do we say?
God be with you here, and God be with you there. Have a great week. Please join me in prayer. God, we come to you today in gratitude for the opportunity to gather and hear your word and to uh, share your, your word with those around us. God, please be with Kayla as she shares with us this morning and help us to hear what it is you will have us hear. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear now a gospel reading from Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I had a brief stint as a waitress in high school. It is a job that I do not look back on fondly. If you know anything about me, you know that I don't have a lot of patience. Um, so yeah, I was not good at it. There was a tiny little restaurant in our town. It might have had 10 tables max. And a small menu of salads, sandwiches, and burgers. We were only open for lunch. So for about two hours every day, we were slammed. If you can call 10 tables in a tiny restaurant slammed. My older sister got me the job, and I was certain that if she could do it, I could do it. I mean, how hard could it be? You walk up to a table, you ask, what can I get for you today? You take their food order, and then you bring it out to them. I went through some training. I was told how important it is to make the customer feel welcome, to make sure we get them what they want, to ensure that they come back. You know, all the things you typically want in a dining experience. What I failed to realize is there's a lot more to this job than simply taking orders. You also need to bring people their food. You need to ring them up. You need to cash them out. You have to do math, sometimes in your head. You have to bust the tables, and then you have to start all over again. And apparently, if you are decent at this job, you should probably figure out some sort of system to keep everything straight, like a grid for the room, or maybe even a way to take orders so that drink number one goes to person number one. I had no system. I thought I would just wing it. And on my very first day, I screwed everything up. I could not get the right food to the right people. Sometimes I didn't even take their orders. Um, and at one point, a low point, which my mom and sister still tease me about, I brought a, food of, uh, brought a tray of food up to a table. They hadn't even ordered, and I said, just eat it. Needless to say, I was promoted to dishwasher by the end of day one. If I even had remembered to ask, what can I get for you today? I wasn't ever really listening. I was too busy focusing on what I needed to do next, how I could solve my next problem, how I could make my workload easier. 
I had forgotten that however important it was to not only make the customer feel welcome, it was even more important to make sure they got what they wanted, to get to, that they got what they needed. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Welcome. Whoever welcomes. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. In the span of two verses, Jesus uses that word welcome six times. And it's easy to read this passage from the perspective of the 12 disciples. The larger chapter 10, he's called them, he's sending them out on their mission, and he says some pretty rough things to them. You're probably going to be hated by people. They are not going to like your message. They're going to drag you into the town square and make you say why you're saying these things that you're saying. You're probably going to make your parents mad at you. Your family may not like you. Yay! I don't know about you, but I would not have wanted to be a 12 disciple after that. But it was kind of cool. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. So whoever welcomes me welcomes Jesus. So I get to be Jesus. That's pretty awesome. And that's sometimes how we read scripture. We're the heroes. We're the 12 busting down doors, spreading the good news. But in this season that we are in right now, I've been thinking more from the perspective of the person who is welcoming, the person in town, the one tasked with inviting the disciples in. How would I have responded to that situation, to someone showing up in my community, in my neighborhood, on my doorstep, and telling me that my entire perspective on life is upside down. That things need to change. That the way I've been living my life and interacting with people is wrong. That the first will be last and the last will be first. I don't know that I would have been very welcoming it's easy to say that word, welcome. We say it a lot. Thanks, you're welcome. We even say it often here in our churches. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome. It's easy to acknowledge that we share this same space. It's a pretty simple acknowledgement. For example, this is a big room. If I don't like you and you don't like me, I can still say welcome especially if you're all the way over there and I'm over here. I don't have to interact with you. I don't have to engage with you. I don't have to deal with the fact that we don't really share the same views. We just smile and we say welcome. But I looked that word up. To actually welcome someone means to greet them hospitably, to receive them gladly in your presence to receive with delight, especially in response to a need. You are welcome here. It's a bit different than just saying the word welcome. It requires us to engage, to set aside our preferences in order to make a comforting space. And if that person that we are welcoming is in need, Maybe it means to stand in their pain and their anger and their discomfort in order to make them feel heard, to feel seen, to feel valued. After challenging us to welcome, Jesus moves on in verse 42. He throws down the gauntlet. He takes it a step further. Not only should we welcome, Receive with delight. Make a space for someone else. Hi, what you're saying makes me super uncomfortable, but I'm willing to sit here with you to hear what you need to say. Welcome. But what he says next takes it to the next level. 
Whoever gives even a cup of cold water, that's a different action verb. It requires me to break the plane of separation. It requires me to push past the boundary of social niceties. I haven't just created a space for you. I've gotten down in your space with you to find out how it feels and to find out what you need. To say, what can I get you today? I should have said no when Mike asked me to preach. Mostly because I speak what's on my heart, and this is a hard season to speak what's on your heart. This is a difficult season to be a white person. Yeah, I just said it. Sorry, Mike. I hope you don't regret asking me to preach today. We are hearing and learning some uncomfortable truths about ourselves, about our nation's history, about the systems of power that are so deeply embedded in our lives. Systems that have propped us up while keeping others down. And the voices that are speaking loudly today about injustice, inequality, poverty, and racism. They are the voices of the 12 disciples. They are telling us that our world is upside down. that things need to change, that the way we've been living our lives and interacting is wrong. And we can choose to ignore it, to refuse to believe the reality of the current climate, to say that this is all fake news meant to stir up controversy and division, we can choose to throw out a generic welcome, a can't we all just get along attitude that keeps us at a safe distance from the very real pain and anger that our friends in our community are expressing. Or we can choose to welcome them willingly with delight, intentionally choosing to sit and listen to some difficult truths and discover how we can best help them to ask what they need. To my friends in our community who have been pushed aside, who have been told your pain, your anger isn't welcome, it isn't right, it isn't polite, you are welcome here. I'm sorry it's taken us so long to see that our way wasn't right. What can I get you today? And now, friends, let us rise and say these words that the church has said for hundreds of years. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, Lord, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. prayer today. God, we acknowledge that we are not always welcoming. We acknowledge that in our pride and arrogance, we sometimes forget that we don't have all the answers and we definitely do not have things figured out. Lord, soften our hearts. Let our ears be quick to listen and our mouths slow to speak. Help us remember that you promised us an upside down world. The kingdom of God is not like anything any of us have ever seen. Help us remember to take part in that and to hold loosely to the things we need to hang on tightly to for control. You are in control. Lord, we also today, we lift up those in our congregation that are struggling. We lift up Barbara, Pat, Gail, Mary, Tammy, Wendy, Gretchen, Greg, and Barbara. We also remember those who are serving overseas. We lift up Jeffrey, John Robert, Brian, Holbrook, Isabel, and Seth. And Lord, today we finally want to lift up those that are on the front lines of this pandemic. We ask you to keep them safe as it continues to march through our nation and our world. And we ask you to be with our government leaders as they make the hard decisions. We ask you to give them wisdom. And we say all of this in your son's name, praying in the way you showed your disciples, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, we invite you to join us in worshiping with our tithes and our offerings. And we are so thankful for the way that you continue to support this church body. Let's pray. God, we offer you your tithes and our offerings. God, we ask that they come together and go from this place into the community so that all of those around us can know and feel your love and care and peace as we have been so blessed to experience. God, we are grateful for all, all of the many blessings that we receive. Help us to remember that there are blessings we receive that we don't even know about. And God, help us to share and to welcome all of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Friends, it's not always easy to be disciples of the Lord. This word has pricked my heart and my conscience to be a welcome place, to be a person who gives. And may it be said of all of us, go from this place, being the hands and feet of Jesus this week, let your heart stay soft as you see the world around you and find ways to show God's love in our community and amongst those who need it. The peace of Christ be with you. Thank you.